to decide what diagram you should start creating when you get thrown onto a project, you need to understand what part of the system lifecycle your project, your system of interest is currently in. If it's an IRAD or it's very early inception part of the process, then you likely need to ask if a use case diagram has been created. If that use case diagram has not been created, then that's where you need to start. You need to start with the use case and as well as the initial user needs requirement diagram. And once those have been completed, then you will go into the structural and behavioral decomposition. So you'll have to decide if you need to start with the structural block definition or behavioral activity diagram. If our system of interest is primarily software or all software, I would start with the behavioral side of the house and start creating activity diagrams to explain the behavior of the software. If you have a hybrid or mixed um, both software and hardware sort of system of interest, then I would start with the block definition diagram and I would decompose my system of interest into subsystems and start filling out the uh, connections between those subsystems and the item flows that go across that. I find it much easier if you're working on anything with any sort of hardware that you can nail down the structural side of the house way before you will be able to nail down the behavioral side of the house. But if it's all software, you need to start with the behavioral side. So once you've iterated several times and built out the behavioral and structural sides of the house, you need to allocate the behavioral aspects onto structural elements, such as using swim lanes on an activity diagram. And once you've completed this, you would likely try and create a main state machine. So this state machine would be, would refine the system of interest block. So the high level system of interest block and this state machine would then farm out to many of the lower level activity diagrams in most cases. By the time you've completed this state machine, these requirements have probably been derived from stakeholder needs to a whole list of requirements that are more specific. And you're likely trying to connect the properties on the requirement to specific value properties within your system. So you need to create these value properties within your block definition diagram. And you need to start creating constraints within your block definition diagram and then adding those constraints to parametric diagrams so that you can start doing mass rollups, um, power rollups, and any sort of other vehicle analysis that you might find important, such as like the top speed. And then you can start to create connections and relationships between the values that you would find in simulation to the requirements that they're anticipated to satisfy. As you create more and more value properties within your system, you will start to realize that some of the value properties are very time bound, in which case you're going to have to create sequence diagrams and add constraints to these sequence diagrams in order to show that the requirement is satisfied or not. So that's what you'll get, do next. And the package diagram, we didn't speak much about. And that's really because the containment tree can really show you everything you need. A package diagram is good for navigation, navigating the model, but it has little to do with the system of interest and decomposing your system of interest. So the examples that I just showed is an example of a way to decide which diagrams to make and when. It is not the way to do it. Um, the, the primary takeaways is that the activity diagram and the block definition diagram are the most flexible and the first ones that you should fall back upon if you don't know where to start. You need to decide if you need a structural diagram or a behavioral diagram, and once you've decided that, you'll know if you need to go to the activity or the block definition. Hope this video helped.